3.6 billion people use social media and the number is expected to increase to 4.41 billion by 2025. Now, the average user spends three hours per day on social media networks and messaging platforms. On top of that, 54% of social media browsers use social media to research products. And even more, 71% of consumers that had some sort of positive interaction with the brand on social media are likely to recommend that brand to friends and family. Now, social media is the best method available today for reaching and engaging with your audience. Today, we're gonna look at how to create social media campaigns. Let's get started. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I'm Karan with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that helps small businesses grow. And today, I'm sharing with you a proven process of creating successful social media marketing campaigns. Before we start though, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future digital marketing videos like this one. Based on the statistics I just mentioned, social media needs to be included in your marketing toolbox. There are many reasons for this. For starters, your audience is already there. As I mentioned, 3.6 billion people are active social media users. That's about half of the world's population. Your audience is already active on different social media platforms and they are just waiting to run into you there. In addition, social media has somewhat changed the concept of marketing. In the past, with traditional marketing methods, marketing was a very one-sided approach where the business threw everything they had at the consumer and hoped that they would make a purchase. But now, with the help of social media, consumers have been given a voice. And this two-way communication has proven helpful to brands because now they can actually have a meaningful conversation with their audience, which creates greater brand awareness as well as brand loyalty. So let's go over the steps to create a great social media campaign. The first step, set SMART goals. When we say SMART goals, we don't just mean intelligent ones, right? SMART is actually an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. You wanna make sure that your goals appeal to each of these five factors in order to get the best results. Make sure your goals are specific by answering who, what, where, when, and how. Your goal needs to be measurable so that you can track the progress and optimize when needed. Then your goals need to be achievable. This doesn't mean setting easy goals, rather they need to be realistic. For example, if you're just creating an Instagram account, and you're looking to build your following, your goal shouldn't be to have 1 million followers by the end of the year. While possible, that's simply not a realistic, achievable goal. Instead, set a goal that you have to work hard to achieve, but isn't out of the realm of possibility. And then to set relevant goals, make sure your goals are set up so that they measure outcomes not activities. And lastly, your goal needs to be timely. And by that, you need to set a deadline for when you want your goal to be completed so that you can create a sense of urgency within yourself to achieve your goal by the desired date that you set. Without a deadline, it will be much harder to stay motivated and committed to achieving your goal, simply because you would have all the time in the world to complete it. What's the rush? But by creating SMART goals, you're ensuring that you have a way to measure your success as well as your ROI. If you're just starting out on social media, building your following is important so that you can establish your brand with your audience, but it is important not to get too caught up in your following. While having a ton of followers are good, it's somewhat considered a vanity metric. You see, a vanity metric is a metric that makes you look good to others, but doesn't actually help you understand your performance and is not used to put together future strategies and campaigns. Consider this. Followers are easy to track, but how can you prove their true value? That's a tough question to answer for any marketer, which is why we suggest focusing on things like your conversion rate, your engagement, and click-through rate to really help you determine how effective your campaigns are. When you think about it, followers are simply an effect of great engagement. Focus on great engagement and the followers will come. You see, we actually did the same thing for Hilton Hotels. You see, Hilton came to Life Marketing to increase their social media engagement and followers. As you can see, we were able to increase their Instagram and Facebook engagement by over 10,000%. And subsequently, we increased their Facebook and Instagram followers by a whopping 30,000%. Let's get into step number two. The second step in our process is to identify who your audience is and learn everything possible about them. You see, this is important to understand your audience 
before you start asking yourself what platforms you're gonna be on. And that's because different social media platforms attract different audiences for different purposes. So in order to make an informed decision on what social media network to use, we need to first understand our audience. Also, knowing who your audience is will be critical to your success, right? When you know what your audience likes and wants to see, you can create more engaging content for them that they will be more inclined to like, comment, and share. And that's how you turn followers into customers. And some of the things you wanna take into account is your audience's age, location, interest, income, and any other information that is helpful for your business to know. Now, the best way to use this information when creating content is to create a buyer persona. A buyer persona is a detailed description of someone who represents your target audience. A buyer persona is not a real person, but it embodies all of the characteristics of your best real customers in your target audience. This person will include all of the audience details I just mentioned, like age, location, and their income. You'll also want to list out behavioral traits in your buyer persona to help understand your audience's purchasing habits. But don't just stick to one. One buyer persona might not be enough for your business. You might find that you have different groups of people that purchase your products for different reasons. Now, if this is the case, you should be creating buyer personas for each and every group. All right, let's jump into step number three, conduct competitor analysis. We can learn a lot from our competitors and what they're doing on social media. Competitive analysis is how you'll find out what is working and what isn't working for your competition. This is important because you're in the same industry and likely share the same audiences. By going over everything your competitors are doing, you will also be able to spot opportunities that your competitors have missed and you can capitalize on them for your own benefit. So when doing competitor analysis, you wanna look at what types of posts are working best, what captions are working best, and you wanna do this across all platforms. All right, let's jump into step number four, which is to select the right social media channels. To select the right channel for your business, you must first decide if the channel aligns with your business. And you can ask yourself the following questions to help you decide. First, are my products or services conducive to visual marketing? If so, Facebook or Instagram might be a good platform for your business. Secondly, is my company B2C or B2B? If it's B2B, LinkedIn might be the place for you to connect with business owners. Now, the next step in choosing the right platform for your business is to decide if the channel aligns with your capabilities. Here's a few questions you can ask yourself to help you decide. First, do I have enough time to create content for multiple channels? Secondly, do I have the budget to support multiple channels? And next, do I have the expertise to create the content needed for these social media platforms? If not, can I hire someone to do so? Once you answer those questions, you'll know the right platforms that align with your business and your capability. All right, step number five, creating social media content themes. Now is the time where we take all the information you gathered and create a game plan for how you're going to create content. And one of the first things you should do is to create a list of content topics. You see, content topics are the things that you could talk about that will bring your audience value. And the easiest way to come up with themes is to create a list of your expertise broken down into three categories. The what, the why, and the how. Or in other words, what your audience should be doing to reach their goals or solve their pain points, why your audience should be doing or thinking a certain way to achieve their goals or solve their pain points, and lastly, how to do the things needed to reach their goals or solve their pain points. As you can see, everything is revolved around your audience's goal or your audience's pain point. And once you have your list, turn your content themes into actual content by choosing a content type. Now, the most popular content types are things like quotes, tips, and tutorials. Now, onto our next step, creating engaging content. Unfortunately, many businesses jump right to this step as soon as they create their social media accounts, but that's a mistake. Before we create any content, the first step is to check out each platform's guidelines for image and video sizing so that you can create super high quality content that is perfectly sized for each platform you're going to post on. Next, before you actually start your content creation, you wanna keep your audiences in mind at all times. Remember in step number two, when we identified who your audience was and learned as much as we could about them. Now we're gonna use all that information to create great content. And we know that your content should be valuable to your audience, 
but what is it gonna be about? There are many strategies you can take for content creation, and once again, that's gonna be based on your content themes. Now, one big engaging content type right now is to share positive news and statistics. Not only do users enjoy seeing this content, but by including a positive statistic about your business, your audience will begin to trust you even more. For example, say your business has strong values that relate to social causes. You can campaign those social causes while highlighting your brand using social media posts. A great example of this is the company 4Ocean. You see, 4Ocean creates bracelets and jewelry out of recycled materials. They have used their social media accounts to showcase them cleaning up the ocean, which resonates strongly with their audience and helps their audience feel more connected to their brand and their mission. How-to or instructional content is also a great post type. An example of this would be a travel agency creating a how-to guide for how to travel the world on a specific budget, or a business in the beauty industry creating a makeup tutorial showcasing the products that they sell. Another great content idea, depending on the age of your audience, would be to appeal to your audience's memories and create posts that inspire nostalgia. I mean, who doesn't love to reminisce about their favorite childhood memories? And to further build your social proof, create posts with testimonials and reviews that you receive. And lastly, if you have something to offer, creating a post for a contest or a giveaway is a great way to build your following in addition to engaging with your audience. I mean, when you think about it, who doesn't want free stuff? Now, all of these are great ideas for content, but remember, you need to create content that aligns with your mission statement and provides value to your audience. If it doesn't, don't post it. All right, step number seven, monitor analytics and adjust your strategy. In this process, we've already spent a ton of time in this process developing your social media strategy. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's not going to be 100% perfect the first time. And you'll need to adjust it as time goes on. That's why the last step is to monitor your analytics and adjust your strategy as needed. If your strategy isn't yielding optimal results for your business, you must pivot. So how do you find areas to improve? Well, you start by taking a look at performance metrics. When you look at your analytics, try to determine why some posts are outperforming others. Look to see if different strategies are performing better or worse than you expected. Look at things like color schemes, post type, content type, and medium. And once you find out what works, post more of what works. And you're likely to see more engagement and your followers increase. Well, that's all for creating a successful social media campaign. As always, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Once again, I'm Karan from Life Marketing. Until next time.